Welcome. Thank you very much for joining our presentation today. How many of you are new to the mainframe? Ooh, okay. How about, how many have you have done any capacity management at all? Uh, okay. Uh, what about ITIL? Okay. Well, this is, um, and just, it's, you could spend hours doing that, you know, talking about this. So, but what I, I plan to do here is just to give you an overview of ITIL capacity management, how it works, and some of the things that you need to think about as you're doing this. I do have another presentation tomorrow morning that talks about, in more details, about baselining in capacity management and that, so you're welcome to attend that. So here's our agenda for today. Uh, talk about capacity management, uh, the difference between capacity and performance management, how that works, how to be successful in capacity management, you know, some of the item, items that you will uh, need. Uh, how about, one of the key things that many people forget about capacity management is that not only do you speak with the technicians, but you also speak with the stakeholders, the business people, and just some of the ideas or some of the thoughts of how to talk to them when you're talking about capacity management. Uh, talk about creating a baseline and its effect on forecasting. Talk about different types of forecast. And just show you a quick example, hi, quick example of capacity management scenarios that you may run into within um, your arena out there. So please, if there's questions, please ask questions throughout the presentation and we'll go from there. And it is uploaded so you can get all the, the download. There's gonna be more slides in the um, download than what we're gonna go through here today just because it's a 45 minute presentation and I just have so much that you could talk about with us. But okay, starting with the framework. What is ITIL? ITIL is the IT Infrastructure Library. It's got a bunch of books, but basically what it is, it's a framework for best practices, not only for capacity management, but for change management, for um, various other things, service management, various other items out there. So that's what ITIL is about. Um, it's been adopted um, as a framework. Many people say you have to follow it, it's not meant to be something that you actually follow, that it's got its prescribed steps through there, but it's a framework in which you can build your organization on. So that's what ITIL is. Now within ITIL, it's got different practices, and capacity management is one of the practices that you have out there. And from the definition of um, ITIL capacity management, this is actually from the book that says, um, ensuring the best use of appropriate IT infrastructure to cost effectively meet the business needs both now and in the future. The whole idea behind that statement is capacity management needs to be proactive. You need to treat it as a proactive enterprise. The last statement is understanding how IT services will be used and matching resources to deliver services at agreed upon SLAs now and into the future. That last statement brings the marrying of the technical with the business, all right? So it's very, and you'll see this, and you'll see me talk about this throughout the presentation. Capacity management is a business activity, okay? You know, many people say, oh, it's like performance management, it's all the technical. Yes, you deal with the technical numbers, you deal with those pieces of it, but everything that you do in capacity management has some business impact on there, out there. So that's what we're, we're gonna talk about. So with that, you have the four Ps that you put into practice. You know, this talks about the four different categories or groups of people that you would deal with within capacity management. The people, that's more your end users, your stakeholders, those type of people. 
talking to them, gathering information. The processes, using ITIL as the framework. It's got, there's a lot of good documents out there, um, if you do a search on Google and everything, that help you with that. The products, whatever tools you use, you know, whether it's something as simple as a spreadsheet to something as a purchase tool out there. You know, we have a purchase tool, but you know, this is not a tool presentation, but, it, but there's tools out there that you can use, whatever you need to use. And then partners, talking to vendors, suppliers, consultants. There's a lot of good wiki pages out there on capacity management and how to do it, and where you can ask questions and those types of things. So you're looking at it from that standpoint, and that's where the partners come in. I talked about ITIL and all the different practices and everything out there, but this is just a screen from the ITIL book, uh, ITIL version three, which is the latest version out there, that talks about life cycle with it from the strategy to the design to the transition to the operation and to the improvement. The one key piece within ITIL and capacity management that you have to really understand is that it's a cyclical process. Okay, you start at one point of gathering the information, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes, gathering the information all the way to creating your capacity plan. Then you go and gather more information and you come back through the cycle. So it's completely cyclical. You don't stop at one point. This talks about the objectives. I'm not gonna go through all of these, but some of the key ones here are the first one, ensure the right level of IT investment. Two, or the third one, evaluate the tuning strategies out there, okay? So you're, you're analyzing what others within your organization are doing to meet the needs that you're projecting for the workloads out there within your environment. Right size the environment or consolidate the environment. Making sure that you don't overspend out there. You, know, you may have a scenario where many organizations spent twice as much in IT than they really needed to because they wanted to be safe. Capacity management helps eliminate that and eliminate that cost out there, that extra cost. Um, ensure the accurate and timely procurements, but the whole key is that last statement, avoid performance disasters. And that's what, again, I go back to, capacity management is a proactive process. If you look at it, what do I do to make it a proactive process? And this is what the key tasks are. You have to start asking questions. Okay, capacity management, one of the key activities is asking questions as to what is going to be happening. Not only from the operational and the IT perspective, but also from the business perspective. Because the business users may and probably do have more insight as to the growth of the workloads out there. So it's a question answering. So you have to get that and start developing that relationship with the business users out there. So in doing so, that helps with the ensuring the, the capacity. You take in the performance monitoring, tuning, you start looking at forecasting through um, a concept called demand management. Demand management, just in a nutshell, is ensuring that whenever a workload needs to process within the environment, that there's adequate resources for it to be processed. And that's demand management. And you, we could spend a whole nother presentation on that. And then producing the capacity plan. The capacity plan, no matter how you do it, whether it's just a Word document, whether it's a PowerPoint document, and we'll talk about this in a minute, it's something that it's a living, breathing, I like to say, uh, in an organism out there because you're constantly getting further information. So you, you create your initial capacity plan. You look at what's going on within the environment. 
and you try to see how close it is to reality. In the beginning, you're probably not very close. But then you start going through and asking, why was I not close? What type of assumptions may have been made that were wrong, or I did not get enough information from the end users? So then you start documenting that. So the next time you go through your capacity planning cycle, you go, OK, I need to make sure I get this information. I need to ask these questions. I need to probe further with that, within that. So again, it's not only from the stakeholders, but it's also from the business people out there. Capacity management is always a balance. Cost against capacity that you have out there. So as I um, stated before, many times people within organizations, and I've been part of them when I've gone into that, um, I've been in this industry for, uh, I guess, probably since dirt was rocks or rocks were dirt or something like that. So I've been in it for 30 plus years. And you see all different kinds of things happening where organizations go out and overspend because they don't want to risk issues out there. So, but what happens in it, because it's a capacity management and all this is a business activity, there's money that's being spent by IT that could actually be going to the bottom line. Okay, so if you think about it, if you're doubling your capacity out there within the environment, that's money that's just sitting there wasted, not being used, not going to the bottom line, that may help, that could help the organization become a better organization, no matter what kind of business it is in. So that's what the cost against capacity, supply against demand, and the, one of the other keys is service level agreements. We're gonna talk about service level agreements as opposed to what's called KPIs, or key performance indicators, and how that relates to understanding within the organization. Capacity management scope, it covers everything. Okay, you think about it, it covers everything within the enterprise. From the hardware, to the software, to the human resources out there, to the business. So it covers everything. One of the terms that you're going to end up hearing about with capacity management is service. And what is a service? And this is a definition um, from the IT, in IT service management terms. An integrated composite that consists of a number of components such as management processes, hardware, software, facilities, and people that provide a capability to meet a stated management need or objective. Okay. If you want to break it down, what is a service? A service is a group of components that make up a business need out there. Okay? Does everyone understand what I'm trying, what I'm getting through with that? So it's a group of components that make up that business need. You're categorizing, you're grouping all that together. And as opposed to looking at it from a standpoint of servers and disk and you know, network cards and those types of things out there, a service is actually a roll up of that. You're looking at it from a line of business or an application point of view, those types of things. So that's what a service is. For ITIL capacity management, you have inputs and outputs. You've got technology, uh, you've got the SLAs, you've got the business plans, all that information. One of the key takeaways that I want you to have as new people within capacity management, especially for um, System Z or Z Systems or ZOS or whatever it's called today by IBM, is that the more information that you have, the better off you're going to be, okay? So you never can have too little information from the end users. 
And the business plans is one of the ways to get those in, that information. Back when I first got into capacity management years and years ago, I had a CTO um, that worked for our company, and he gave me a little bit of insight, and he said, the, one, the person in IT, or the person that in a business unit that had the most information about how that business unit was going to function was his admin assistant. They have, they have the information. They know what's needed. They know what's out there. They know how to gather that information. So one of the things we used to always do is whenever we had to give a presentation before the CTO, we'd go and give the presentation in front of her first. And she'd be able to tell us whether we were on mark or not. Or see, we'd say, this was an assumption. We're not really sure what's going on. And how can I make this better? And she would help you. you know? So don't be afraid to go off and talk to various people like that within your organization to get that business plan out there. You've got business capacity management. You've got um, the component capacity management and all these things out here, you know, as processes. But I'm going through this a little bit faster than I normally do because of I only have 45 minutes. <laughs> but capacity management, if you want to break it down, it's in these three categories. And you're looking at it from a top down where the business capacity management is the organization. Maybe it's the business unit, however you want to look at it. Some business units are so large that there is their, a, their own company. So you're looking at the revenue, the number of users, the type of workloads that you're doing. Say that it's a retail industry. So it's the number of stores out there, all that information. Then you break it down to service capacity management. So for service capacity management has two levels within it, really. You're looking at it from a line of business level. So you're looking at that information from there. So lines of business, however they do. Uh, take, for example, um, the banking industry. They have different lines of business. You've got the ATMs, you've got the loans, you've got real estate. You got all, you know, something like administration. Those are all different lines of business, and that goes underneath service capacity management. Then you drill down below that, you have all the components that make up that server, the service, excuse me. You have all the servers, you have all the network information, all those types of things that go into it. So that's where, those are the three levels within that. When you do a capacity plan, it depends on, in your presentation, who you're talking to. If you're talking to the technicians, you're more likely going to be talking from a component standpoint. How many servers do we need to handle this workload or this increase of workload or this new application? If it's the business unit owners or the line of business, so they're going to be worried about Am I going to have enough response? What's the response time going to be? That type of thing. If you go up all the way to the top level, you're going to be looking at it as how much money am I going to spend for all this? So you're looking at it that, those three levels just to give you an idea, a key through there. OK. Many times people talk about capacity management and performance management as the same thing. It's not. If you want to break it down into two, into one statement that satisfies both things, performance management alerts you on problems. So it's reactive. Capacity management, as it goes back, as I said before, is proactive. You want to be able to make sure that you have enough resources out there. That's what this is meant to show you, and I'll bring up the complete chart. 
So you have performance management, you, you exceed your threshold, you have a problem out there. How do you triage that problem? How do you solve that problem? That's what performance management, they're alerting you that something has happened out there. Capacity management is proactive because from the beginning of time to that threshold, you're looking at what resources are out there. Do I have enough resources? Making sure that I talk about those resources and what they are necessary. And then past that performance alert is analyzing that situation. Why did it happen? What happened? Did all of a sudden a business unit throw in a new application that one, you had not been told of, or two, they rolled it out a lot faster than they thought they were going to, and they didn't tell you. So that type of thing. So on either side of performance management is capacity management. Okay. Does that make sense? Is that how we talk about that? This is a, so written by one of my colleagues that talks about capacity is not performance. So if you have a CPU core is either doing something or nothing, 100% or 50% out there, right? Doing, it's either turned on or turned off. And CPU percentage is at an average over a fixed time. So if you go through the first scenario with two cores, with a power of one, total equals two, one transaction takes one second, two transactions take two seconds, the CPU never falls below 50% for that duration. The environment is 100% used from a capacity standpoint. Okay, if you look at the, spot, the bottom scenario, we have one core, one transaction takes a half a second, two transaction takes one second, the CPU is 100% busy during that duration or 50% of the time over two seconds, it's only 50% from a capacity standpoint. So that's how you have to look at it. So that's, that's the big difference between capacity and performance is how much do you, how much activity can you do at a certain period of time? That's what we talk about. How can you be successful in capacity management? This screen depicts that cycle that I was talking about earlier. That cycle being you start from the far left end, you've got, you get your business data, your service, your component data. You monitor, you gather all this data. It helps if you have that data in a centralized capacity database, no matter what type of data that you need. You have the technical data in there that you bring from there, but you also have the business data. And it's key to have that business data in there so that you can correlate the technical information and the business informa information from the one single source. So you have one repository that has all that information. Once you start with the monitoring and the analyzing, then you go into demand management. Demand management, again, is making sure that you have the right amount of resources when a workload needs it, or when the environment needs it. But you can do various other things. There's other techniques, there's other areas within demand management that you can talk about, such as, say you're getting constrained. Here's a capacity scenario. Your environment is getting constrained. Your, your IT budget is at its max, all right? You know that your peak hours are 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Okay. Everyone's hitting this, the mainframe all at that same time. Everyone's doing all their work. 
Demand and management, his whole philosophy is looking at the workloads, and part of it is, again, with capacity management, is you're looking at this finite set of resources that you can use. And you say, hmm, can I take some of that workload and move it to off hours okay. without impacting the productivity of that workload? Maybe there's batch queries that are running within DB2. You know, maybe there's other transactions that can wait to run later in the day. Maybe there's batch jobs that can run later in the day. So that you have enough resources for your critical environments out there. So that's what demand management. Then you start modeling. Modeling comes into two flavors. Modeling can be trend reports. Uh, so you're looking at the activity and you're doing a, a trend, maybe a straight trend or a regression um, analysis, that type of thing. But there's also another piece called analytical modeling. And in a nutshell, you can go, we can go into detail about this, but in a nutshell, what analytical modeling is, is looking at the workload as it arrives under that server at a, cur a certain point of time and what the resource usage is at that point in time. Do you have enough resources to do that? You're gonna, we'll, you'll see a, um, an example of an analytical model at the end of my presentation here to be able to show you a scenario, just a quick scenario of that. But that's what you do with the modeling. With modeling also, you have um, the piece of, you can do simula simulation modeling. And simulation modeling is where you, in essence, take the um, current production environment and when you do that, you duplicate it and you run the same type of workloads and try to figure out what, what you really need and add and all that kind of stuff. The problem with simulation modeling is it's expensive. It's expensive in hardware. It's expensive in the um, time it takes to do it. Um, it's extensive, expensive in resources, meaning that there are people that are specialized in doing simulation modeling. It's not a very simple technique that you can do. There's a lot of experience that takes into it. But some organizations, let's say the stock market or the stock exchange, they have to do that. They can't do it handle local modeling because it's so critical. But, but again, modeling of those two, 90% of the time people do analytical modeling and they're fine. Then you start going into the application sizing. And all that is from the information that goes into your capacity management information system or your, your capacity database out there, the repository that sits out there. And then you derive your capacity plan from it. Once you have that capacity plan again, you start the cycle again as you move forward. Okay. When you're talking to the technicians, you're talking in techie terms. We get all these geek terms out there, IOs and, and everything like that, these servers. When you're talking to the business units, you're either talking with SLAs, service level agreements, or service level SLOs, service level objectives. Then along with that, you've got to figure out a way to marry that so that everyone within the organization understands what this component is that we're going to be measured upon. And that's, that is a key performance indicator. That's how you do it. A key performance indicator is basically something that is quantifiable, something that is black and white. You know what it is. Everyone within the organization has agreed upon the meaning of what that is. Everyone knows what it is. There's no gray area about it. And then you measure your success 
by that key performance indicator. It can be a number, could be the number of widgets made within an hour. That's what the organization decides is going to be a key, a KPI. Or it could be a relationship, the number of widgets versus the number of technicians working at that time or that type of thing. So it could be a relationship, it could be a calculation, but it's something that everyone understands what makes that up. Everyone does that. And most of the time you have it, it's reflected on a scorecard. And the scorecard is usually red, amber, and green. Green means we're fine, amber meaning we may have issues, we may not be meeting our KPI, and red means danger, Will Robinson. We've got an issue out here. So that's what it is. The reason I bring up KPIs at this point is, remember how I said that the capacity managers not only talk to the technical, but they have to talk to the business? This is one way of helping you talk that business by helping them develop these KPIs. And you look at it, you've got it from the left-hand left side, you've got the business, services, and components. You've got all that information in there. You come with measurement of the data, and then you start aggregating the information up to where you aggregate to transactions from the component area, you aggregate from the transactions to applications, and then up at the enterprise level are the KPIs. You may also hear it termed as CSF, which is critical success factor critical success factor, say that too many times, or QoS, which is quality of service. You can go into a lot of detail about, you know, there's really three differences between, between them, but in essence, they're, they're the same objective, okay? It's a measurement of how we are doing, and it's a discrete measurement of that. It's a concrete measurement. How do I talk to the stakeholders out there? The whole point behind that is, what is the story I'm trying to portray, portray, portray to that person? Okay. If it's a techie person, you're giving a different type of story than you would to the CTO. So you have to understand what your audience is and how you're going to do this. What, what type of information, how you're going to present that information. Okay? The techie guys, you're probably going to have all kinds of detailed graphs. The business unit, you, you know, you may have a PowerPoint out there. But a CTO, they're so busy, they may just have, they say, give me a paragraph of, my, of what's going on. That's it, that's all they wanna see. You may have the, a full document behind that that, they'll, that you send with it, but all they want is that purpose or that assumption or that analysis up front. So again, what is the story you're trying to tell the people out there? And that goes back to the admin assistant um, out there within everything that you're doing. So, talking with them, because they can tell you exactly how that person wants it. Talk about the different capacity plans for different offices. You can read this when you download that. Talk about creating the baseline. And this is just very quickly of the baseline is your modeling, how you're gonna model the environment, how you're gonna determine your starting point for your capacity plan. So the time and duration, looking at peaks, looking at averages, um, looking at trying to decide what kind of consistent behavior within the workloads are out there. So that's what the baseline of modeling exercise is. Um, if you come to my session tomorrow, you'll be able to get more detail about doing the baseline and with that. 
But when you get it, the whole bottom line of capacity management is this forecasting piece. And it comes into three flavors. The key point of capacity management is that top picture. The quality of service to the stakeholder, whoever that stakeholder is. It could be you sitting out there at your uh, PC trying to get in and enter in an insurance claim. Okay, it could be that. It could be you out there standing at the ATM wanting to get money um, to go to dinner or to go to a concert or something like that. You know, that's what that, that whole quality of service is all. And you want to, you see that, that little arrow going up? Is you want to make sure that you don't hit what's called the knee of the curve. Okay? Because performance will go, it'll slowly degrade. So you start here and it slowly starts going up here. But at some point, it gets to that point of saturation within the environment and it just goes up like that. Where all bets are off. No, you, you can't do anything. Okay? So you, that's what the whole point behind being proactive within capacity management is not hitting that knee of the curve. What do I need to do to make sure that that does not happen? You do it by modeling, you can do it by trending. Again, you become like a, um, uh, from the, in the United States, I think, they, I think I've seen it on TV. There was a, uh, a TV show called CSI, okay? You become CSI within your organization because you have to start figuring out all these pieces you know, things may not look right, and you go, okay, why is this not right? Why did this happen? I gotta go and find out why it happened. So that's the whole point, but not only is it a proactive activity, a capacity planner has to be proactive themselves, okay? So you have to go in and talk to people. You have to be able to get an understanding, develop that relationship with them, and that's all about that. Trending versus modeling. Trending is easy to do because it's just one metric. You're looking at that one metric. Modeling takes in the environment and looks at the workloads. Those are the two main differences between the two. Okay. I'll leave this for you to, there's, there's all kinds of notes within this presentation too. So you, all of that I'm saying here within that. And you're more than welcome to um, email me if um, you got questions. Okay, last piece that I'm gonna go through before my five minutes is up is just different looks of information, how you present information in capacity plans. That being, this is the scorecard here. So we have KPIs out here for different components out there within the environment. And very quickly, you can see where you're meeting your objectives, where you're not meeting your objectives. Everyone can see that. So a scorecard in doing that. You can do something like this, okay? Where, it, where you take an application and you chart it and you say, over this period of time, we have enough capacity to manage it in the beginning, but as we f move further on in the analysis, we start getting where we start having problems, we start having issues. <clears throat> and again, it is a little comment section here. So again, this is something that everyone can very easily, very quickly see what the potential issue is. So in some of these were IO, so with the I.O., you can say, okay, we need to go to the, um, the storage group and say, hey, we need to reconfigure this. Something's, it's not gonna be right when we start doing this. So there's many different, so the scorecard, this is another scorecarding type um, that we've done here. So it makes it that way. This is a quick model here. Um, the whole point behind this model is the results of modeling with the hardware and I.O. You can see at the beginning of the top left-hand chart, you see that the I.O. was growing 
considerably, I mean, the IO, the CPU, was growing considerably. Then they made changes within the CPU configuration, and you can see what happened there. And, but the whole idea is this bottom right-hand corner is the quality of service to the end users. Does it stay the same? Does it grow? Do you hit that knee of the curve? That type of thing. So there's many different tools that you can use to do that as you move forward. And the takeaway here, the summary, capacity management is a business activity. Bottom line, that's it. If you treat it that way, you'll be successful. Okay? You're the translator between the business and the technical. That's what it is. You gather all the business and technical data possible. As you start going through this and you start going through this whole process, um, there's going to be bumps in the road. You may not get all the information. But once people start seeing the value that you're providing them by these capacity plans, they'll start becoming more open to giving you more information because they know that in the long run, it's going to be better for them. Ask questions. Ask questions. Ask questions. Continually document the assumptions because if something goes wrong, and you say, well, this is what they were gave us, so we had to assume this. You have it documented, and then you can go back and say, hey, we need more information to get rid of this assumption. Huh? Or if the CTO goes, why don't we go belly up? You can say, this is the information I got. We had to make these assumptions. And then the CTO will go back to these people and say, hey, you need to give these people this information. So document, document. So capacity management. So well, a business, this is my statement here, a business activity that ensures IT resources are available. Be proactive. And that's it. Any questions? Comments? Yes? Uh, yes, you spoke about um, that more data um, now is better. Um, hmm. Appreciate that a capacity planner that's got over 30 years of experience would know their infrastructure inside out, mm -hmm. including any key phase. So, what would your advice be to a newcomer into Z um, in terms of catching up to that knowledge, or um, is it just a matter of time, or what would you consider? No, um, one, yes, it will be a matter of time to know what information out there, but see what kinds of reports that are out there. Um, from that are already being generated. One of the other key is if you have a help desk system, go and see what, kind, what types of tickets have been open for capacity issues and start generating reports that match that. So that's a good way to be able to go off and do that and be able to say, hey, we had, you know, we had a capacity issue on Thursday because of something going on. Why did that happen? Start running reports against that. Seeing if that was just an anomaly or if that was the steady state of things to come. So that's where you start doing that. Does that, uh -huh. so, so that, so you're gathering, it's constantly gathering information. Even to this day, when we go out and do presentations and do consulting engagements, we have to do the same thing. So we're like brand new going into environments, we got to start asking the questions. So those are the types of things. Um, again, look at reports that you have running out, that are running out there. Look and see if you've had capacity related issues, what they are, and run reports to try to determine what happens there.